Welcome to our homestead. You can see behind us our components for our solar system that we love and does a great job for our house. I did an entire series of videos on this system before, and now we are going to be changing it out to the new EG4 6500s. We're going to go over how to install the new EG4s. We're going to talk about the benefits of it, and we're going to compare between the two systems. And before you say, well, oh no, why are you taking out your old system, the GrowWatt 5000 ES? I love these. There's no change in my opinion of them. They are great. But we are going to be using them for our barn and our well, which are about 100 yards away from our house and on a completely separate transformer that's still connected to the grid. So instead of running 400 feet of wire from the main house up to the barn, I'm going to put in a separate system for the barn. And of course, it's going to be much smaller. So let's get this grow watt off the wall. I'm going to talk about the technical differences between the EG4 and the grow watt. And then I have to start taking all of this down and apart, moving it over because those EG4s are a little bit bigger than the grow watts and they don't require this transformer. So here you can see them beside one another. The EG4 is much bigger than the grow watt and it weighs about twice as much. So keep that in mind when you are hanging it on the wall. The max rated power of the grow watt 5000 ES is 5000 watts and the EG4 is 6500 watts and they are both 48 volt. Now what was amazing is I could put 6000 watts of PV input into the grow watt inverter. With the EG4 I can put two strings totaling 8000 watts of PV input so it's quite a bit more input into it. So your max open circuit voltage on the grow watt is 450. The minimum is 120. The cool thing about the EG4 is its max is 500 volts open circuit and its minimum is only 80. Your max charging current on the grow watt is 100 amps and the charging current on the EG4 is 120. And for both of them, you can parallel up to six inverters. That is a ton of power. So here's one of the differences. The grow watt is a 240 volt inverter. So to get this one to produce 120 volts for your home, you needed one of the transformers like the GrowWatt transformer or the Solar Edge transformer, the midpoint transformers, to split that into a neutral leg so you had both 120 and 240 for the house. And the EG4 is a 120 volt inverter, so you have to have two of them to create a split phase 240 volt uh, for your home, for your big loads to use in your home, like your dryer, your stove, your water heater, etc. So if you were to get started with just the grow watt and a one transformer, you're going to spend about $1,250, give or take. And that is the uh, smallest that you could go is starting with one. Obviously, you can't start with one of the EG4s. The EG4s are $1,299, and so that's about $2,600 for the two inverters to get started. But to rate at the same amount of power as this one, you would need two which would only be 10 kW or three, which would be 15 kW. And over here, you're getting 13 kW out of two of them. So if you add in another inverter for this and you still won't have an, as much power as the other two, then you're getting in a similar cost range. So if that's something you're concerned about and looking for, this one is a little less to start with but the wiring is a little bit more complicated with the transformer. And that's where a lot of people had some reservations also is with the transformer on the GrowWatt. Now, GrowWatt has never had an issue or Signature Solar has never had an issue with any transformer going out and losing your neutral leg, which means 240 goes to the entire house, to everything, lights, outlets, everything. They've never had one documented issue. And I didn't worry about it at all either. A lot of people put in two transformers and we do have two transformers. That was just to showcase the difference between the two transformers. But the EG4 over here is a bit easier to wire. So we're gonna show you how to do all of that. Now it's time to tear all of this stuff off the wall and I have to run bigger wire for the EG4. So that is another thing that you're gonna have to think about and calculate for is the EG4 will take a larger gauge wire because the amperage is higher. 
And as always, I specify I'm not a solar installer, I'm not an electrician. You need to consult with either one of those if you are not comfortable putting in your own system. I'm just a DIY guy who studied for years and was able to do it myself with the help of the guys over at Signature Solar. And of course, watching a ton of videos by Paz, Prouse, and a whole bunch of other guys. If you're looking for equipment like these batteries and our new inverters, I'll have the link for you in the description below. So we're not getting into the full build today. That will be on the next video. What we will be doing is cleaning everything up and spacing everything properly today. So the EG4s require about the same amount of spacing as the Grow Watt, 20 inches on top and eight inches on the sides, and they're bigger. So that's why I need to move everything. Plus in the future, I plan on getting two more EG4s. So I had to calculate in where those are gonna live on the walls. Now the really cool thing about the EG4 inverters is obviously they talk seamlessly, communicate seamlessly with your EG4 battery. So these are the EG4 LLs. I have seven, there are six here in this stack and then I have one more off to the side. Now the EG4s will communicate very well with many different batteries, but obviously since these are the EG4 batteries, everything is seamless. And if you're wondering too, these EG4 batteries communicated perfectly with the grow watts also. Okay, so it's time to move this sub panel, cut some conduit and rerun some new wire that you can see over here. This is four gauge. The EG4 recommends four gauge wire in the manual. I've seen people run it with six, but I'd stick with the manual and run the four. So I wanna show you this real quick. To me, this is really important when you're planning out your system to get the spacing right so you can get your wire lengths correct. And I'm a planner by nature, I'm an architect and a town planner, so I like drawing things out like this. And I really recommend everybody doing it because it really helped me with my battery uh, cable connection calculations. So I am almost done removing the original parts and pieces for our grow watt system. The last thing here is the 6.3 cable that runs through my attic and over to my main panel. And I need to run this four gauge THHN back to that panel. Now I have a 52 foot run, so I'm gonna have about a 10% voltage loss. I'm gonna land this on a 70 amp breaker. If you have any critical loads, I believe the longest run that you can have is 15 feet, and that's a 3% loss. Anything over that, and you wouldn't be able to run any life-saving machines. So keep that in mind. And this is a good chart to look at for voltage loss and wire size and breaker size. It's been really helpful for me, and it's the same one the solar company uses. Time to mount the EG4s on the wall. If you can hit a stud, cool. If not, that's not a problem. Just make sure that your anchors are enough to hold that weight. So if I wasn't clear earlier in the video, we are not going over specific wiring and communication wiring today. That will be in the next video next week, so stay tuned for that. So before I put this one up on the wall and we continue with our system design, I wanted to mention what comes in the box. We have our current sharing cable. Now, if you're using these in split phase or three phase, then do not use this cable right here. So we are using ours in split phase configuration, 240 volt, so we don't need those. This is the paralleling cable. This will parallel between both inverters. This one is the, the communication cable with your uh, computer if you intend to hook up your laptop to it. This is the special EG4 communication cable for your EG4 batteries. And with this cable, that communication is seamless between them. This actually comes with these cable glands, which are really nice. This one's for the PV input, and this one is for the battery. 
Now down here where we have our AC input and output, I'm going to be using some flexible conduit with these connectors right here. And like I mentioned before, we can have two strings of PV input. We've got a PV1 and a PV2 port. This little plate right here actually needs to come off for these communication ports here. This is the, the parallel connection. And if you wanted to use this as a remote control piece and put it somewhere in the, else in the house, you can do it. It does disconnect and then you've also got those connections up here for that communication. We've got our battery input here and we also have this extension piece for uh, the battery holes here and I, I don't really know why but it's nice that it comes with it. So something I wanted to mention that's very important. This murder is very similar to the MPP 6548 but it has a lot more features and one of those if you want to get this uh, commissioned is that it's UL listed. It's UL1741 and the MPP is not. Another interesting cool feature is that they have these removable and cleanable filters on the sides, both sides actually, of the inverter. So when the you're getting airflow through here and these get dusty, you can clean them off. That is a really nice feature. So the way my system is set up is I have this sub panel next to my inverters and I'm gonna land line one and line two onto the 70 amp breaker. And then from here, I'm gonna take that back through a safety switch and back to my main panel where I have another 70 amp breaker that it will land on. And with that 70 amp breaker, I've got a generator interlock kit. So this is just the same. It runs like a generator. It's just the same as my old grow watt system but I'm not gonna mount this at the same level as the inverters. I'm gonna mount, mount it down some. That'll give me a little bit better access to it. I've got these two knockouts on the side ready to receive those lines from the inverters in here to land on this breaker right here. And then I have enough room toward the top of the ceiling in my room to put the safety switch and mount that above the sub panel. And of course, make sure you leave the proper clearance for the side of your inverters. Continuing to plan out and space the system is important. And Signature Solar recommends these 60 volt, 200 amp Nader breakers for your battery connections, your positive battery connections. These are DIN rail mounted, so you're going to need DIN rails for those and they just connect on the back like that. And you will mount them on the wall underneath where your positive cable is going to be. So remember, when planning this out and placing these on the wall and designing this, you need to leave room for your communication cables up here, your line out to your sub panel, and also your PV lines in. That way it'll look nice and neat and it'll be clean. So the next part of the setup is going to be a little bit different for everybody. It's going to depend on what batteries you have and where they are located. But the one thing that you do need to have is some sort of bus bar for those batteries to connect to. That is recommended if you have multiple inverters that you're connecting to. So I have the EG4 batteries and I have the cabinet that Signature Solar sells for those batteries. They have integrated bus bars. But the way that I'm going to wire these, I have some additional bus bars right here and I'll tell you why. So I'm gonna mount them over here in this open space here, which is gonna give me good connection with everything. But the reason I'm doing it is because I have two different sizes of battery cable. And I did that because it was less expensive to buy a four aught battery cable, a shorter length of it, and a two aught battery cable, a little bit longer length of it, than buying a longer run of two aught cable. So the EG4 cabinet has the spacing for four battery cables on both the positive and negative side. And to do that, I would need to run from positive all the way over, positive all the way over, negative all the way, and negative all the way. And that is, was way more expensive than running from one point, four aught cable, over to our new bus bar, and then a two-aught from each inverter over to that bus bar. 
And we'll get into all that in the next video when I show you how to put the crimp terminal ends on these battery cables, connect them to the bus bars and connect them to the inverters. Like I said earlier in the video, I want you to draw out your system and measure things. And that helps with calculating the length of wire that you are going to need. And it's going to save you money if you do that. Because if I would have gotten all two aught cable for this, it would have been almost 40% more in cost for that battery cable than getting the four and the two. Now, additionally, you can buy a wire way like this to clean up all the wires. And I had purchased this to clean up the wires on my old system. I know a lot of you made comments and that is not necessary with this because there is actually few wires that really need to be behind this. And we're gonna be using flexible conduit anyway, so I don't think it's necessary. So as always, I'm gonna have linked in the description below all of the parts and pieces like the DIN rails and the extra bus bars that we used in this entire project. I have the battery cable too because I found a really good price on Amazon for it. But again, the lengths are gonna be determinate on your system and what you calculate. So I'm really excited about hooking these up. I'm also excited because these eliminate the need for that transformer. And I talked about that a little bit earlier. I know that was a big sticking point for a lot of people. They were kind of scared of it. Uh, it works fine and there hasn't been any problems. But if you were worried about it, if you want a little bit easier of a connection process and you're doing it yourself, then these are the ones for you. And remember, I'll have the link to these and Signature Solar in the description below the video. If you have any comments or questions, leave them for me in the comments section below. Now go check out this playlist right here, which is our entire series on how we installed solar on our homestead. Have a beautiful, blessed day. We'll see you next time. Bye.